Don't believe the hype. Before you take any kind of medical advice from anyone, make sure you know what their medical credentials are. So my goal in this video is to shed some light on some of the deception that's out there, especially on the internet and more specifically on YouTube. All right, so a short disclaimer, I've got nothing personal against any of the people I discuss in this video. They just serve as examples of what some people will do to deceive you. First, let's talk about people who are giving nutritional advice on YouTube. The majority of them are calling themselves some sort of nutritionist. Now, there are thousands of people like this on this platform, and I'm sure there are some very competent, knowledgeable, caring nutritionists who are truly helping people to achieve a healthier lifestyle. Unfortunately, basically anybody can call themselves a nutritionist. In the state where I live, Texas, you don't need a license. There are no exams that you have to pass to call yourself a nutritionist. And a lot of extremely underqualified people are doing just this. So how do you know who is truly competent and who isn't? Well, you really don't. And you really have to feel for those nutritionists who are capable and competent. So my recommendation is if you are looking for nutritional or dietary advice, find yourself a registered dietitian. In all states, you have to have a license to practice as a registered dietitian. You have to have a degree in dietetics from a four-year university, and you also have to pass a board exam in order to practice as a registered dietitian. Basically, a registered dietitian is held accountable. And before I forget, if you like this video, if you found some value in it, hit the like button or better yet, hit the subscribe button. I'd definitely appreciate it. Okay, let's shift gears. Let's talk about a gentleman by the name of Jordan Rubin. Now this guy is the poster child when it comes to deceit regarding medical credentials. In his biography, it states, Rubin has earned a doctorate of naturopathic medicine from People's University of the America School of Natural Medicine. Damn, that sounds impressive. Until you dig a little deeper. So here's how the story goes, supposedly. As a freshman at Florida State, he was stricken with Crohn's disease. Apparently this was such a severe case that he was forced to drop out of school as a freshman. Now, nowhere could I find that he actually went back and finished his undergraduate studies. So how on earth did he become a doctor? So according to Quackwatch, Rubin's press materials state that he has degrees in naturopathic medicine and nutrition, and he is certified as a nutritional consultant. However, none of his quote unquote credentials have any legitimate academic or professional standing. His naturopathic medical doctor degree is from the People's University of the America School of Natural Medicine. This is a non-accredited school with no campus. So basically, this is a diploma mill. You send in your money, you get a diploma. Pretty cool. And his PhD, this is from the Academy of Natural Therapies. This is a non-accredited correspondence school. And this school was shut down in the state of Hawaii back in 2003. The Academy of Natural Therapies reopened in Colorado as a massage school, as a massage school. And his certification as a nutritional consultant comes from the American Association of Nutritional Consultants, whose only requirement for quote unquote professional member status is you pay about 50 or 60 bucks. Basically, he bought this. Alrighty, so let's summarize Jordan Rubin's true medical credentials. Well, he's got none. He is a college freshman dropout. He is utterly unqualified to be giving any medical advice of any kind. Just as an aside, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, charged that Garden of Life Inc., which is a dietary supplement company that Jordan Rubin owns, that they made unsubstantiated claims that their supplements treated or cured a variety of different things. Everything from the cold to cancer. And they were also charged with making false claims of clinical proof. So they falsified clinical studies, basically. All right, enough of this guy. Let's move on to Josh Axe, man of many credentials. Take a listen to this. Hey guys, Dr. Josh Axe here, Dr. Natural Medicine. Hey guys, Dr. Axe here, Dr. Functional Medicine. I'm not sure what to call this guy. He's got so many credentials. But if he were to be honest about what he actually is, he would say that he's a chiropractor. So let's break this down. So he's claiming to be a naturopathic doctor and also a functional medicine doctor, right? Well, at first glance, it seems that way, 
but this guy is very careful not to use the word naturopathic. So he's using the term doctor of natural medicine. And here's why. Currently, anyone can call themselves a doctor of natural medicine. So a doctor of natural medicine is not regulated nor licensed. Therefore, there is no regulation on the qualifications, education standards, or guidelines. So basically, if you have a complaint against a natural medicine doctor, well, there's no board you can go to to file a complaint. And how did Josh X become a certified doctor of natural medicine? Well, according to his LinkedIn account, and this is not a joke, check this out. This is apparently where he got his doctorate of natural medicine. <laughs> what? But according to this document, he most likely purchased it. And his doctorate in functional medicine? By the way, do you even know what functional medicine is? I didn't. I had to look it up. So what I did is I just looked it up on Wiki and here's what they had to say. Functional medicine is a form of alternative medicine that encompasses a number of unproven and disproven methods. It's also been described as pseudoscience quackery. And I thought this was kind of interesting. In the United States, functional medicine practices, they've been ruled ineligible for course credits. So basically continuing medical education credits by the American Academy of Family Physicians because of concerns that they might be harmful. That's pretty telling. And how did he become a functional medicine doctor? Nowhere is it mentioned on his website, nor in his bio. It's not mentioned on his LinkedIn page. He does, however, have a world-renowned functional medicine center. I'm at a loss on this one. Unless he conferred this doctorate degree on himself. If anybody out there knows, please let me know. And under the why am I not surprised category. Josh Axe and Jordan Rubin are business partners. They founded Ancient Nutrition. I'll just leave it at that. Now this next one for me, this one kind of hits close to home. Dr. Weston Childs. So I came across this guy when I was doing research for another video. Now immediately I knew that something was wrong. This guy is a DO, which is basically an MD. This guy successfully completed medical school, and I have to assume that he also successfully completed his residency training in internal medicine. So basically, this guy knows his stuff. Medically speaking, this guy can run circles around Josh Axe and also Jordan Rubin. I was curious as to why is someone like him talking about a syndrome that doesn't exist, adrenal fatigue syndrome. Well, it turns out that this guy no longer has a license to practice medicine, and I'm not gonna get into the specifics of how that came about. The key here is that armed with all of this medical knowledge, he decided to go against everything that he was taught in medical school and also in residency. And this guy's trying to give legitimacy to dubious diseases and treatment modalities that are just not endorsed by people who practice conventional medicine. And why is this? Surprise, surprise. Okay, this next one, this one's actually tragic. This guy's name is Jeffrey Dummett. And this guy's not a YouTube guru or anything like that, but I thought his story deserved to be told. So Jeffrey Dummett by trade is a massage therapist. So this guy joined a sham organization named Australian Traditional Medicine Society. Now this organization claims to accredit alternative providers and where Jeffrey Dummett crossed the line is when he started portraying himself as a naturopath. Jeffrey Dummett ended up taking on a gentleman who was in renal failure as one of his quote unquote patients. Now he promised this guy that he could cure him with a detox treatment, that he could cure his kidney disease, his kidney failure. So what did he do? Well, naturally he treated this guy in his backyard clinic and following rapid weight loss from this detox treatment, the patient ended up dying. You never want to dehydrate someone who's in renal failure, but this guy didn't know that. So he was eventually charged with manslaughter. He was eventually also found not guilty. So I've given you several examples of the links that some people will go to to deceive you. So what can you do to ensure that the medical advice that you're receiving is legit? Ironically, on the very day that I started putting together a list of things that you might want to do to help protect yourself, this article comes out. This is from YouTube. So in its latest effort to limit health misinformation, YouTube is trying to make it easier for users to identify and differentiate reliable factual videos made by certified healthcare professionals from those made by wellness gurus and their ilk. 
So starting today, the platform will let doctors and nurses apply for verified provider labels and showcase their videos on special healthcare carousels in search results. Now, I am hoping that this turns out to be successful. Now, I do have some concerns that there are some unscrupulous people out there who will find a way around it. So for me, the litmus test is Jordan Rubin. If this guy is able to obtain a verified provider label, then the verified provider label is useless. And if that does turn out to be the case, then here are five things that you can watch out for to help protect yourself. And I do want to thank Whitney E. R. D. for all this good information. I want to give her full credit. These five tips actually come from her. So if you get a chance to check out her video, she does a heck of a job. So here are the five things. I'm just going to go ahead and summarize them for you quickly. Number one on this list is that quacks make definitive statements. And one of the examples that Whitney E. R. D. gives is that they may say something like, blueberries prevent Alzheimer's disease. Now that's a very definitive dogmatic statement. Be on the lookout for things like this. Number two, quacks lack references. So very rarely are they ever going to refer to a well carried out powerful study. Number three, quacks often reference other quacks. This happens quite a bit, pretty self-explanatory. Number four, quacks lack proper credentials. That's what this whole video is about. And last on the list, this is what I call the positive shopping cart sign. They're always trying to sell you something. And we have come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you actually got something out of it. So until next time, stay safe.